Akuma's coming out this week. You know, Akuma, eh, kills fighters, doesn't afraid of anything. At least, that's what Capcom's been telling us. Akuma has been consistently portrayed as one of the strongest and most murderous characters in the entire franchise. Well, besides Bison. I covered it a bit in my unfinished Street Fighter storyline series, but I stopped just before the new generation era. Some of this will be recapping what I've covered there, plus some extra stuff about Akuma that I didn't touch on. In this video, we'll finally uncover the truth about Akuma. Is he Street Fighter's deadliest fighter, or its deadliest fraud? So, let's do a quick recap on Akuma's origin. He's Goken's brother, and they both studied Ansatsuken under their master, Gotetsu. The two brothers disagreed on the true aspects of Ansatsuken and parted ways with Goken learning a non-murderous version of the art and Akuma going all in on the killing version, the Satsui no Hado. After some time passed, Akuma returns and kills Gotetsu in a duel and takes his prayer beads as a trophy. From there, Akuma would go into conflict against his brother Goken, Ryu, and Gen, to name a few. It's implied that Akuma's killed countless people across his entire life, but all that shit happened off screen and is wildly open to interpretation. I only care about the kills that happen in official lore or in games, but before we break that down, let's talk about Akuma's main method of murder, the Shun Goku Satsu. Shin Goku Satsu literally translates to instant prison murder or instant hell murder. Three guesses as to which one sounds cooler. It's more commonly referred to as the Raging Demon, which is also a pretty based name. In the game, it has Akuma sliding up to his opponent and striking them several times in a flash. In universe, Akuma fully embraces the killing intent of Ansatsuken and attacks the opponent with a deadly barrage of attacks that not only damages the body, but can also harm the opponent's soul as well. The eviler and more fucked up the victim is, the more damage the move does. As a penance stare with punches and kicks thrown in. Or, to quote myself, a powerful, powerful move, move that can kill any, any opponent, opponent every single time. time. The most well-known method to counter the move is to tap into the power of nothingness, or Muno Ken, the exact opposite of the Satsui no Hado. Other methods do exist, but they're bullshit and character specific, which we'll get into as the video goes on. Now let's talk about Akuma's most famous victims. No illusion is safe when bathed in the pure light of the moon. Now is the time to test your strength. Goken. He's Akuma's brother. After killing their master, he returns to kill him, but Goken defeats him and spares his life. He returns the favor by later killing him with the Raging Demon. Ryu and Ken find his body and then they bury him. This death was permanent until Capcom decided to roll that shit back and rise him up from the grave. <laughs> not only did he not survive, but he survived being buried alive, without food, air, or water for several years. How is he not a fucking zombie? The story goes that he was just barely grasping the concept of the power of nothingness, and it was enough to put him into a death-like coma for years on end. This is probably the biggest strike against him on this list, as it was established for years that he killed this man. Akuma fights him again towards the end of the Street Fighter 4 games, but he didn't kill him there either. This was their last known duel too, so that's that. <laughs> Gen was once a legendary Chinese assassin and a friend of Chun-Li's father. In his elderly years, he was diagnosed with leukemia, and he realized that he didn't have much time to live. Due to this and the numerous attempts on his life by his old enemies, he decides to come out of hiding and go out in a blaze of glory against a strong opponent. Gen learns about Akuma and decides to seek him out. Eventually, the two meet and battle intensely and even manage to revive each other's finishing move. In this encounter, Gen actually defeats Akuma and spares him so he can fight him again one day. Much, much, much later. Accept your fate and go to hell! The sun! Well, probably dead. Um, I mean, Capcom hasn't put out anything definitive saying one way or the other, so... Eh? Now, face the mighty bison. 
He's the leader of Shadaloo and master of the sinister Psycho Power. Psycho Power feeds off negative emotions, but may not necessarily be evil, according to Oro. Psycho Power's negative influence can be suppressed if one works at it, or if you don't care, just be like Bison and be a complete dick. I mean, it has its advantages like enhanced strength, reflexes, and durability. You can float and teleport, and if you have a terrorist group at your disposal, you can have your guys whip you up a machine that can channel and store negative energy to charge your psycho power. Only downside is the fact that it will completely wear down your mind and body. Anyway, Akuma challenges Bison during the events of Street Fighter 2 and kills him with a raging demon. At least, until Street Fighter 4 happens, where he once again moves his soul into a new body. Bison has done this before. His original body got destroyed in Alpha 3, and then his replacement body got wasted by Akuma in Street Fighter 2. Akuma didn't kill Bison, but he's kinda bullshit, so it's understandable. <laughs> well then, let me test your skill. Oro. He's a really strong ass hermit and probably one of the top three strongest fighters in the universe. He mostly wanders around and takes care of various animals as pets. When he does manage to stay somewhere for a bit, he has no trouble making friends. Dude is also a bit of a wise sage, so much so that the likes of Dalsim and Rose hit him up for advice whenever they have issues understanding the universe. I mean, it makes sense. This fucker's 140 years old, that's more than enough time to learn some shit. Still, he enjoys the challenge and likes to face worthy opponents, just like our boy Akuma here. One day, the two battle each other being pretty evenly matched. So much so that if they continued, they would probably end up killing each other. So they end their fight before it got to that point. So in other words, it was a draw. Harmony. That is the truth of what you must seek. Gil. He's the leader of the secret society and Urian's brother. The brothers were genetically enhanced in an early age alongside other children so they could be able to withstand the society's training. Many in the society believe that he is the reincarnation of their previous emperor or something. I don't know about that, but they've been controlling things behind the scenes for about 2,000 years. They have some plan to leave humanity to a utopia or some shit. He has the powers of fire and ice as well as enhanced physical abilities due to his upbringing. He's behind the tournament in the New Generation era, and at some point in the tournament, Akuma shows up and hits him with the Raging Demon and kills Gil. Nope, never mind, this fucker just rose himself from the dead, because that's how cheap he is. At least Bison has the decency to jump to another body. Nobody really knows how strong Gil really is, as he throws fights every so often to further his own goals. So while he probably has more L's than Akuma, he never really fights as seriously as Akuma. Yep, that's all. Outside of Gotetsu, Akuma's record is shit. He fought one guy to a draw, he killed three guys but all of them came back to life, and then there's one fight that's not confirmed to be a win or a loss, cause Capcom hasn't revealed as such, so... eh? Greatest fighter my ass. This man kills nobody and no one. Not anybody of importance anyway. He did kill some jobber that Adon was supposed to fight, but that's it. It's a good thing he looks cool and is fun to play because if not for that, nobody would fuck with him based on his performance in the universe. The Kuma will probably be out for at least a day or two by the time this rolls out. Maybe he'll kill somebody in his story mode. Maybe he'll kill Seth. We all know that motherfucker ain't coming back. Game over.